Fatigue is often one of the most severe and debilitating symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And although there are many medications for fatigue, they all have potential side effects. But luckily, there's some evidence that nutrition may play a role in fatigue in multiple sclerosis. And today, we're going to look at different diets for multiple sclerosis fatigue and the scientific evidence behind them. Let's have some fun. Although many people associate with multiple sclerosis with symptoms such as weakness and vision changes, research shows that symptoms such as fatigue and pain are often more important in terms of overall quality of life. And to give one example, I'll show a quote from my former patient, Barbara Richardson. It feels like when you've been out in the ocean swimming and you're just making it back on shore. You just throw yourself on the shore and you just can't move. Your body feels like you're carrying a 50 pound weight and you just can't do anything. You feel like you've just worked out for two hours after not working out for years. It can be overwhelming. If that quote sounds familiar to you, stay tuned. By the way, Barbara is also the protagonist in Chapter 10 in my book, Resilience in the Face of Multiple Sclerosis, if you want to check it out. And my name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And if you find this video informative, please click like. So one thing I should say is sometimes there are factors other than multiple sclerosis and diet that affect fatigue. So if I have a patient complaining to me about fatigue, I'll usually check some basic labs like a complete blood count looking for anemia or iron. I'll look for thyroid function and vitamins such as B12 and carnitine. I'll also assess sleep because some people have insomnia or other uh, factors contributing to poor sleep like sleep apnea that's untreated that can be very important. Also exercise has been shown to reduce fatigue a along with light exposure. And if you can't get regular sunlight exposure, there are actually these blue lights that are usually used to treat seasonal affective disorder that can be very effective in the treatment of fatigue, even outside of just winter-associated fatigue. Well, so let's look at some different diets. So one of the most popular diets is the WALS protocol, which is a modified paleo diet. I'll also look at overcoming multiple sclerosis, and I'll disclose a conflict of interest to you that I tend to favor this particular diet, OMS overall. And then I will also look at a low-fat diet, such as the whole foods plant-based diet. And we're going to look at Dr. McDougall's study at Oregon Health Sciences University, along with ketogenic diets. So let's start with the WALS protocol. And if you're not familiar with Dr. Terry Walls. She's a physician who claims to have reversed her secondary progressive MS using a modified paleo diet along with other interventions such as exercise, functional electrical stimulation, and uh, elimination of toxins. And you can see her picture to the left, October 1st, 2007, in a tilt requiring wheelchair and using an ankle foot orthosis, and to the right, riding a bicycle. And there's her book to the upper right. Now, the Walls protocol is very complicated, and obviously this presentation is only on diet. And even her protocol involves three different diets. And from least strict to most strict, they are the Walls diet, Walls paleo, and Walls paleo plus. Basically, the Walls diet involves eating nine cups of fruit and vegetables per day, no eggs, legumes, or gluten, so it's a paleo diet. You're avoiding potential antigens, which could be allergenic. And as you progress to the Walls paleo plus, there's sort of more meat, a little bit less vegetables, no starchy vegetables, and the addition of coconut milk and coconut oil in order to achieve nutritional ketosis. And she also advised eating two meals a day. If you want a little bit more information on the details of the Walls protocol, I'll go ahead and put a link to a separate video I did on this topic. Now let's look at some data from some of her various trials. This is an intervention of the entire Walls, Pro Walls protocol, not just the diet in progressive multiple sclerosis. And so again, the Walls protocol is the modified paleo diet in addition to supplements, stretching, exercises, functional electrical stimulation, stress management, toxin removal. And you can see that there's a clear tend trend towards decreased fatigue over time. And you can see they use the FSS, or the Fatigue Severity Scale, which you'll see in essentially all of these studies. And there's quite a large range in the different individuals, but you can see a clear trend towards a decrease in fatigue by 12 months. And if you look at just the averages, you can see a clear steady decline over the course of 12 months. Now you might say, well wait a minute, that was an entire protocol with exercise and toxin elimination. What about just diet? Well, this is also by Walls, a randomized controlled trial looking at the modified paleo diet versus 
control. So we're just looking at diet. Now this is relapsing MS and there were very few individuals, only eight who were getting the diet versus nine who were getting the control with a 50% dropout rate. So maybe take it with a grain of salt, but you can see that the treatment did seem to be uh, effective. You can see before in black, after in gray, and you can see those in the modified paleolithic dietary intervention, they went way down in terms of fatigue. And these are big, big differences. If you compare this with studies on provigil and other stimulants, this looks to be very, very effective, maybe even more effective than some of the medications. If you look at each individual person in the study, you can see a lot of variation. On the left side, these are the controls, and you can see they either stayed the same or got a little bit better or got a little bit worse, but with the people who were in the WALS protocol group, or just the diet group I should say, about half stayed the same, none really got worse, and half got better, and several of them got much, much better with a significant reduction in fatigue. Now, she also did a study against the ketogenic diet, and I don't have the full results, but they report that paleo improved fatigue, but the ketogenic diet did not. And this is just a pilot trial to be continued. Now let's look at some other studies. The man to the right is Professor George Jelinek, who is actually an Australian physician who believed that lifestyle could be a treatment of multiple sclerosis. And I have a little bit more detail about his book, Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis, and he gives various pieces of advice, not just diet, also sunlight, exposure, vitamin D supplementation, exercise, etc. But he recommends a whole foods, plant-based diet plus seafood. So you're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and soy, so it's not a paleo diet, but it is a low saturated fat diet based on some of the original evidence from Swank and others. And you also avoid dairy, which is one thing it has in common with the Walls Protocol, and of course you avoid processed food. And he has a lot of publications, but this is sort of a study just looking at correlations between uh, dietary health questionnaire and fatigue, and they sort of divided people into two groups. In other words, they said you either have an SS, FSS less than four, which means no functionally significant fatigue, or greater than four, where you have significantly impairing fatigue. And then they looked at the different quartiles of healthiness of their diet based on the dietary health habits questionnaire. So if you you were in the first quartile, in other words, the top 25%, only 47% uh, had no clinically significant fatigue. And then if you were in the second quartile, 37.9%, the third quartile, 31.3%. And if you were in the bottom quartile, only 21.5% had no clinically significant fatigue. So there's a very clear trend there. Now, this is very similar to a cross-sectional study published in the Green Journal, the American Academy of Neurology Journal. And I'll read you a quote. They say, a healthy lifestyle entailing a dietary intake higher in fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains, and lower in added sugars and red meat was associated with lower disability levels and fatigue in people with MS. Now, this is not a randomized study. This is just cross-sectional data. And you can see just one piece of data they looked at the composite healthy lifestyle index and they kind of divided it in a binary way, yes versus no. But people who were healthier had about 24% reduced chance of moderate fatigue and 31% reduced risk of severe fatigue. And by the way, one thing that I'll mention is the nutritional element that was most associated with a better prognosis overall in multiple sclerosis was whole grain consumption. So that sort of flies in the face of the paleo idea that you should avoid gluten. But again, the data are very inconsistent, and this is not a randomized study. This is just cross-sectional data. Now, let's look at a different type of diet. The man to the left is John McDougall, Dr. John McDougall, and he runs a dietary program in Oregon, and he's a proponent of a low-fat, plant-based diet in multiple sclerosis. So this is a vegan starch-based diet where you would eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, especially starchy vegetables such as rice and potatoes and beans. You would not eat any animal products whatsoever, so no dairy, no eggs, no fish. And he's also a believer in a low-fat diet, so you wouldn't even really eat a lot of nuts or you know other high-fat vegetable foods, and certainly not vegetable oils. And uh, Oregon Health Science University is, by the way, where the original Dr. Roy Swank, who is a proponent of a low-saturated fat diet, that's where Dr. Roy Swank practiced as a neurologist. And if you want to see a separate video on the possible link between low-saturated fat and multiple sclerosis, I'll go ahead and put up a card to a separate video.
But anyways, they didn't really show any benefit in terms of reducing MRI lesions or improving disability. But if you look again at the FSS, the fatigue status scale, there's a huge decline in the treatment group. So the red is the treatment group, group and the blue is the control group. And for whatever reason, the treatment group had much, much worse fatigue to begin with. And for whatever reason, maybe just based on random chance or some kind of bias in the study, but they ended up with less fatigue at the end of 12 months. Now, you know, a lot of people ask me about ketogenic diets. I really couldn't find any high quality data, but this is a small pilot trial looking at a control group, a so-called fasting, fasting mimicking diet, which is essentially just intermittent calorie restriction, and a ketogenic diet. There were 60 patients in the study, 20 in each group, and you can see they didn't really look at fatigue, but they looked at overall quality of life, which includes fatigue, and you can see the control group stayed about the same, and the fasting mimicking diet seemed to do better and the ketogenic diet also did better and just to summarize, you know, one thing I would say that people often overlook is to address other causes of fatigue, such as nutrition, not just nutrition, but exercise and sleep and, you know, specific laboratory tests. In my opinion, really multiple dietary interventions have evidence. So the Walls Protocol, Whole Foods Plant-Based Diet, based on the John McDougall study, Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis, all have evidence, and it's really difficult for me to favor one over the other. Some things they do have in common is that they all are whole foods diets where you essentially avoid processed foods, so no Twinkies or French fries or soda pop or anything like that. And all three of them actually avoid dairy, but they're not consistent in terms of saturated fat or exclusion or ex inclusion or exclusion of gluten and other potential antigens. And I should also mention that there's also an ongoing pilot trial to further test the ketogenic diet. So we'll get some more data on that. So a question for you is, have you tried any of these diets? Did they influence your fatigue? Make it better? Did it stay the same? Make it worse? Please share in the comments below. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.